Hi everyone, thanks for joining us today. Um, my name is uh, Dr. Mary Ahn. I am a breast surgeon with Northwestern Medicine Regional Medical Group. And I am filming today from the Northwestern Medicine Donor Cancer Center on behalf of Living Well Cancer Resource Center. I'm going to be talking to you about breast cancer management in this day and age, and we will take some questions. And if you would like to leave us a comment, we will look at them and I will try to answer them if time allows. So what I wanted to talk about is obviously breast cancer since that is my area of specialty. And I've been treating breast cancer as a surgeon for almost 20 years. And in this new decade, there's been so many changes that have come across that allows us as part of a multidisciplinary team. That means the medical oncologists, the surgeons like myself, radiation oncologists, and other care providers um, to offer sort of an individualized therapy. So we used to say if you had a stage one breast cancer, this is X, Y, and Z that you need to do and that was it. Um, but we can utilize that information and a lot of the clinical trial data that is available to us to accommodate the biology of the disease um, as it applies to you. So one of the things that people ask about are doing mastectomies. Well, as a surgeon, I love doing mastectomies, but I also love to perform breast conservation, which is a lumpectomy. And depending on the type of cancer, the location of the cancer, the size of the cancer in relation to the breast size of the patient, we will talk about which is going to be the best cancer treatment. And at the same time, is that a cosmetically pleasing outcome for you? We know that survival is no different. Whether you choose to do a mastectomy for a particular stage cancer or do breast conservation, as long as the breast conservation is done in total package. So if you were to do a lumpectomy, we recommend following it up with radiation therapy to protect the remaining breast tissue. And then also talk to the medical oncologist about the systemic protection with either endocrine therapy or chemotherapy or both and sometimes immunotherapy. But when you combine all those multiple disciplinary items, your outcome is going to be very similar if you had a mastectomy and try to avoid some of the other items. Now doing a mastectomy in certain early stages, you might be able to avoid radiation therapy, but there are some biology of cancers that you will not be able to avoid systemic therapy. So you would have to look at it together talk with all the team members and make the decision that makes the most sense for you for that cancer. Um, there are some um, advances in reconstruction efforts as well. We have now included into our options a nipple sparing mastectomy and depending on the, again, the biology of the disease, the location of the disease, size of the tumor, size of your breast, various factors put together to determine if cancer-wise it will be safe to preserve all the skin and the nipple while removing the breast tissue for treatment. If you do meet all the criteria for safety, then you will proceed with a mastectomy, a nipple sparing mastectomy with an immediate reconstruction. It is understood that if you're going to do nipple sparing mastectomy, since everything is left intact in the front portion visually, that you would want to fill back the empty space as best you can and immediate reconstruction is what we recommend. Us breast surgeons will work with plastic surgeons to try to coordinate that for you. Whether you need uh, chemotherapy or no chemotherapy, the nipple sparing mastectomy and reconstruction can be performed and still allow you to have the appropriate systemic therapy. Now, people have also asked about um, additional projects that can come from reconstruction, and I'll just kind of touch up on a couple of things. I'm not a plastic surgeon, so I don't know how to answer maybe in too much detail, but I do know that if patients have undergone mastectomy with reconstruction, if they are not able to preserve the nipple, that the plastic surgeons can offer reconstruction of that structure, sometimes by remodeling tissue to make the appropriate mound to have that nipple contour show, along with tattooing to make the color look as natural as possible. 
And then some ladies choose to do uh, 3D tattooing, which is now available um, through expert tattoo artists. And we can link you up with some of those folks who have provided amazing cosmetic outcome for these patients. For those who are going um, through breast conservation with lumpectomy, followed by radiation therapy. There are many options for radiation therapy. And as a breast surgeon, since I work in this multidisciplinary team, we do make sure that you have every opportunity to speak with our radiation oncologists about the different options, and I try to keep up with that as well. So some of the options are whole breast radiation, which then treats, as we said, the whole breast after a lumpectomy. But some biology of those tumors and the sizes and such can allow radiation oncologists to offer varying options of targeted therapy, such as partial breast radiation therapy. And some of the partial breast radiation therapy technique uses external beam. Some technique uses internal by way of utilizing a catheter that is placed inside the lumpectomy cavity and treating outwardly. And then there are a handful of ladies who may qualify for clinical trials associated with the partial breast radiation therapy, and I believe the Proton Center has an opportunity there. Oh, that leads me to talking about proton therapy after breast surgery. So some of our patients who have advanced cancer, stage three cancers where there are lots of lymph nodes involved, very large tumor, especially if it is located on the left side of the chest in front of the heart, we want to make sure we are providing an opportunity to protect the heart as well as treat the disease that is visible or treat microscopic disease that we worry about. And proton therapy can be utilized and at our Warrenville campus, our Northwestern Medicine Proton Therapy Center can offer that option for some of our patients. Are there any questions that I can answer for anyone? What side effects might lymph node removal cause? Okay, so some of our ladies who have um, stage one, two, and three cancers require to have the lymph nodes evaluated. And when we evaluate the lymph nodes, uh, we are, as a surgeon, we're operating under the arm and removing lymph nodes that hopefully gives us the information that we need. If going into surgery, we are not suspicious of any lymph nodes, there is a technique called sentinel node mapping and biopsy. The sentinel node mapping and biopsy requires us to inject the breast with particular dyes that will help track down the lymph nodes that may actually have the information we're looking for. So these are the gatekeeper lymph nodes. In our breast tissue, we have lymphatic paths that drain the um, contents, the fluids, the cells, into the lymph nodes for filtration. Cancer cells can hop onto that pathway and get to the lymph node to grow. So when we do our lymph node evaluation with the dyes, it tells us which lymph node to check, not necessarily that they already have cancer, because the dyes are not that smart, but we can identify which key lymph nodes to remove. Now, if I can identify key lymph nodes to remove that are maybe one, two, or three lymph nodes, and the dissection is narrowed down to those particular areas, the likelihood of injuring the tissue in the axilla is much, much lower than if we were to do a full axillary dissection. So if we don't damage that tissue, um, the scar tissue will be less, and the likelihood of subsequent lymphedema or the swelling of the arm after surgery is lessened. So if possible, we do try to utilize the sentinel node technique to try to minimize the surgical intervention while at the same time obtaining the key information that is necessary for treatment. So um, Julie is asking, she's HER2 positive, and she's asking what about an NSM with direct to implant? Um, yeah, I think the NSM is, I believe, nipple sparing mastectomy is uh, the question. So regardless of the disease, so if you have a HER2 amplified tumor or HER2 not amplified tumor or triple negative tumor, if the tumor is situated in an area where the distance to the nipple is far enough and cancer-wise, 
nipple sparing mastectomy is feasible, then you can have that particular surgery. Implant reconstruction with direct-to-implant means that after the mastectomy is performed, the plastic surgeon will place your final permanent implant, whether it's a saline implant or a silicone implant, that would be your size that you have chosen, and that will be implanted, and that will be the end of the surgery. Um, many times patients cannot do this because of size discrepancies, um, and that will be a discussion to have with the plastic surgeon and it basically comes down to the outcome that you're looking for. Occasionally though, even with nipple sparing mastectomy, if the skin flaps are not as healthy as we anticipate at the time of surgery, the plastic surgeon may decide to place a tissue expander in order to allow for that skin and the nipple to heal as best you can before placing the final implant. So it is feasible to do a director implant, but it all depends on the final outcome that you're looking for as far as size and whether the skin will allow that to happen at that time. Um, I think the part two of that question is um, the amount of breast tissue that should be removed um, with this. It sounds like she's had multiple, um, sought multiple consults and the plastic surgeon um, is saying he wants to take out as much breast tissue as possible to allow for that expander or um, implant and uh, she's asking is that recommended uh, to reduce her chance of reoccurrence? So again, I think it depends on the type of cancer and the location of the cancer, how much tissue needs to be removed. However, whenever a breast surgeon is removing breast tissue in a mastectomy, we are not looking to leave extra tissue for the sake of reconstruction. We are looking to remove tissue that is necessary to be removed to give you the best cancer outcome. Some of us have a nice layer of fat under our skin before our breast fat starts out, and some of us don't. So everybody can be a little bit different and we can't make a single statement about what can be done and what cannot be done. So we have to assess it for individual. Um, the comment about take as much as possible. Well, again, if the tumor is in the front portion of the breast and it's in close proximity to the nipple, it may not be a safe decision to keep the nipple and the skin anterior to that. You may want to remove that skin so that you can have the best margin possible. But again, it depends on the disease process um, and the flaps that we make underneath the skin are to keep the skin healthy and fed with the blood vessels so we don't try to damage that skin during our surgery. Uh, we leave the natural skin fat and take the breast and breast fat. So again, it depends on the individual. So I'm not sure if I'm answering that question um, to your satisfaction, but um, I think that's the best we can do uh, in that situation. And there are times when I have patients where I've told them it is not safe to do a nipple sparing mastectomy because of the type of disease that we found or the extent that we've noticed or we have some calcifications that are suspicious going right to the nipple or right under the nipple surface. Um, in those situations we would remove that portion and uh, that lady would go through a skin sparing mastectomy instead. Linda's uh, asking, she's been on an estrogen blocker for eight years and is asking if that's long enough because she's starting to develop high cholesterol. Well, I'm going to have to refer you to talk to your medical oncologist about the duration in which you should be on anti-estrogen therapy after your cancer diagnosis. In some situations, uh, they may be able to switch out the medication, however, you would really need to talk to the medical oncologist. The duration of endocrine therapy varies, um, and it's minimum five years, and in some cases where the concern for a local or systemic relapse is high enough, uh, they may recommend that you take it for 10 or more years, but you would want to discuss that with your oncologist. And Cheryl's asking, do you recommend surgery, radiation, and one year of an estrogen blocking pill for stage 1A invasive ductal carcinoma? Um, well, if you are a candidate 
for having the appropriate breast conservation surgery, then the most appropriate next steps are after the lumpectomy that is satisfactory, meaning negative margins, and the node has been appropriately staged, would be to have radiation therapy. Now, you would talk to your radiation oncologist and discuss the mode of delivery of that radiation therapy. There are some stage one cancers uh, in an older age population that may do okay without radiation therapy, but that's something to discuss with your radiation oncologist because again, we are able to individualize care um, depending on the biology of disease. But standard of care is lumpectomy followed by radiation therapy unless you meet other exclusion criteria. The endocrine therapy with tamoxifen or anastrozole usually is a five-year recommendation regardless of the stage. And I would encourage you to talk to your medical oncologist about the duration that you should be taking the endocrine therapy. Darlene is asking, uh, she continues to have pain in her reconstructed breast in the, on the side towards the armpit area. Is this something that could be relieved with surgery? Well, I think that you need to have a, an examination and discussion with your breast surgeon or your plastic surgeon to determine the ideology. Why are you having the pain? And depending on what that is, uh, there are many things that can be done, obviously. But I'm not sure surgery is the first thing to think about. I would probably make sure that your breast surgeon is satisfied with the examination and presentation and make sure that there isn't anything suspicious going on. And if there's nothing suspicious going on, it could be inflammation, scar tissue, or other nerve injury in that area. So you must talk with your surgeons before thinking about the next steps. And my personal thought about doing surgery for pain is that you probably will end up with a different kind of pain if the real reason for that pain is not addressed. Um, so you need to really um, discuss it and evaluate it and make sure that there are other modalities that are available. What will my breasts look and feel like after treatment? Will I have normal healing in them? Um, if you have a mastectomy, uh, with or without reconstruction, the sensation in the skin will be very different. A few ladies do report to me that after a few years that they did have some sensation come back. But many ladies will say it is not quite numb, but not the same. If you have lumpectomy, there are some varying degrees of pinching and pulling that can occur throughout the years. But for the most part, the sensation should be about the same. Will I have stitches or staples at the surgery site? and do, should I anticipate a drain or a tube from the site? Um, that would be a question you want to address to your surgeon about the type of surgery that is being performed. It all depends. It's a nice answer, isn't it? It depends. Sometimes we have to use staples, sometimes we have to use nylon sutures, sometimes we use hidden stitches, sometimes we use combination of all those and use glue. It's quite variable, so please check with your surgeon about that. Um, this question is about breast prosthesis. Mm -hmm. um, what determines if I would need one, and if I do, where would I get one from? Well, if you've had a mastectomy without reconstruction and you would like to fill the bra space with a volume of something, then that would be the time that you would consider getting prosthesis. And we have lists of facilities that will fit you with a bra that's appropriate and will also fit you with the proper sizing of the prosthesis. I don't have that list at the top of my head, but that is available through American Cancer Society. Living Well Cancer Research Center can have links to those facilities and you can also contact your breast surgeon's offices for that information. Um, there are some ladies who, after doing uh, breast conservation with lumpectomy, that they do find slight discrepancy in size so that they don't fit quite well into the bra. In that situation, you could get a partial prosthesis to fit. Many of my patients tend to just create a small um, 
quilted padding that they put in to supplement the bra space. Um, but if you needed to, you could certainly get fitted for a silicone type or a prosthesis to put in the bra. Dr. An, you mentioned uh, tissue expanders. Uh, can you talk a little bit more about how those work? I think that's a more of a plastic surgeon question. However, since I do remove breast tissue and observe them placing tissue expanders often, I can say some things. Um, it is a space holder device. So in the empty space after a mastectomy, the plastic surgeon will insert this uh, saline fillable bag and secure it to the chest wall and to temporize that situation of the volume that you want eventually. Um, once the skin is healed, the plastic surgeon will then inject saline and sometimes they inject air into that bag to stretch out the empty space and hopefully encourage the skin to stretch as well. So an example is a patient who would like to go from a smaller cup to a larger cup after their mastectomy. They will get a tissue expander in place and over weeks to months the plastic surgeon injects fluid or air to stretch the skin so that it heals and gently stretches and when it reaches a certain size then the plastic surgeon in the operating room will remove that expander and place it with a permanent implant. Uh, just circling back just from uh, a couple uh, past presentations that you've done I know this is a very common question. Can I have reconstruction at the same time as a surgery to remove, remove the cancer? What are the reasons for or against having it done or waiting until later? Sure. Um, so many women who are candidates for mastectomy are candidates for immediate reconstruction. Um, so whether you have a skin sparing mastectomy or a nipple sparing mastectomy, you can proceed with the plastic surgeon placing some sort of an implant, whether it's a tissue expander or a a permanent implant. Um, those ladies that we discourage about immediate reconstruction are those women with inflammatory breast cancer or locally advanced breast cancer where so many lymph nodes are involved already that we do know even after mastectomy and axillary dissection that they would require radiation therapy to the chest wall as well as the draining lymphatics. We know that we want to make sure our breast skin is as healthy as possible and if a radiation therapy has to be offered to provide optimal local control, we also want to make sure that the cosmetic component of reconstruction does not get in the way of the treatment and also that you are decreasing the risk of any potential complications. Some of our patients have implants put in prior to knowing the final diagnosis at the surgery and realize that there's just more disease than we had anticipated and they will require radiation. Obviously we do not remove the implants at that time for the radiation therapy and we will observe and monitor and care for that skin as carefully as possible during radiation. But for inflammatory breast cancer and some stage 3 cancers where we know ahead of time that the radiation therapy is going to be a mandatory or highly recommended therapy, then we I tend to discourage immediate reconstruction because the potential risk of infection, implant, extrusion, skin necrosis, all of those things can get in the way of the proper treatment. In that situation, the ladies would have mastectomy, follow it up with the completion of all of their therapies, and when the skin has healed appropriately, then they proceed to the next steps of reconstruction if they wanna follow that up. Most often at that time, it will be soft tissue transfer reconstruction, meaning the plastic surgeon will likely take tissue from the tummy or from the back to bring it over to the front for protection. And you talked a bit about setting a known biopsy and lymph node removal. Um, what can a patient do to reduce their risk for lymphedema? So the disease process tells us how much node surgery we have to do. So um, the thing to do afterwards or before is to prepare for it well. One is that uh, we have our lymphedema therapists go through exercises and evaluation self-surveillance for any changes in the extremity. 
um, prior to going through surgery and then after surgery we have an immediate follow-up with the lymphedema therapist to see if there's any immediate changes that may or may not be noticed by us but that can be calculated or measured by the therapist. During recovery we do encourage slow increase in activity but one of the things that have shown to help in recovery of the extremity uh, and to prevent the likely scarring is to do gentle weight-bearing exercises and um, slight, you know, light weight lifting type of exercises. But we don't want you to jump into it right away. We want to gradually increase the uh, the weight that you are using. But working with a lymphedema therapist, I think that will help make sure and ensure that the scar tissue formation is as smooth and um, dis not disrupted proper exercises. Okay. Well, thanks again for joining us and I hope I have answered some questions for you.